When it comes to exercise or even sport, we have probably heard the expression, pain, that's just weakness leaving the body. Well, in the spiritual life, we gain from pain. Welcome, friends, to Sipping on the Sabbath for this fifth Sunday of Lent. Thank you for journeying along with me in this preaching series, Crisis Precedes Renewal. I'm coming to you today from the sitting room in the suite of rooms I was living in over the last few days. I've been here at Our Lady Queen of the World Parish in Richmond Hill. Shout out to all my new friends and subscribers to this channel from the parish. I am also grateful to Father Jojo for his hospitality to me over these last few days. And like the other parish missions that I have been blessed to lead, I can assure you that Jesus passed by, his people showed up, and miracles have occurred. Physical, spiritual, emotional healings, particularly through the sacrament of confession. The Lord is definitely on the move. He is definitely at work. He is definitely calling us, you and me, all of his people, to a place of profound freedom in life. So thanks be to God for that. My next stop is at Epiphany Parish in Scarborough. And if you are in the neighborhood of that parish, uh, please do stop by introduce yourself to me. It's been really cool to meet a lot of my supporters and subscribers over the last number of weeks that I have been on the road, and we will continue to, of course, uh, pray for each other. Jesus, again, he's, he's always calling us to himself, and he continues to speak to our hearts as we're journeying through the season of Lent, calling us through crisis to a place of renewal. And we're continuing today to read through the Gospel of John. And there is no agony in the garden scene in John's Gospel. The synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, do record the agony that Jesus experienced in the garden. But just because there is no scene of agony in the garden in John's Gospel doesn't mean that Jesus didn't suffer. We're told in the scripture readings that we have from Mass here today, this is the second reading from Hebrews that we have, we're told that Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. By his own admission in the Gospel of John, Jesus tells us that he was troubled. He is troubled because he is now on the verge of facing loss, the loss of his freedom, the loss of his friends, the loss of support, the loss of his life. But he said, it is for this reason that I have come into the world. Jesus came to pay a debt he did not owe because we owed a debt we could not pay. And from this place, this place of pain, Jesus is teaching us by his own example that, yes, crisis does precede renewal. Crisis leads to new life. Pain leads to gain. I don't inflict pain upon myself. I don't go looking for the cross. It knows where I live. It will indeed find me. But I accept the fact that the circumstances of life, which can be quite difficult in our lives, are opportunities to grow, to grow stronger in our spiritual life, to grow stronger in our willingness to be of service to the Lord. And we're brought to that place of acceptance. Let go or be dragged and hold on to the Lord Jesus. He says to us in the gospel, again from John, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so for us to bear fruit, to be true missionary disciples, to lead others to 
Jesus, we are called to die to our self. And that, again, can be an incredible place of crisis. All through the weeks of Lent, we have seen time and again individuals in Scripture who themselves experienced a crisis and by extension applying the Scriptures to our life because Scripture is not just about that which happened, past tense. It is about that which is still happening. And so when I hear the readings proclaimed at Mass, or when I read them ahead of time and pray into them and through them in anticipation of going to Mass on Sunday, I ask myself, okay, how does this apply to my life today? What is Jesus asking of me today through the example of the individuals I am reading about in Scripture who themselves went through crisis by the grace of God and arrived at a place of renewal. Some Greeks, the gospel tells us, came to Philip. They were in Jerusalem. The Passover was soon to be celebrated. And you wonder, what did they see in Philip? Why were they attracted to him? What did people see in us? Why would they be attracted to us and then allowing us then not to puff ourselves up, but allowing us then to lead them to a place of encounter with Jesus because our contemporaries are searching. They are looking. And again, I can testify to how, having been now on the road, preaching the gospel for four weeks now, people are responding. People are saying yes. People are stepping forward in response to the invitation that the Lord is placing on their hearts. And we want to be of assistance to them, to bring them to a place of a personal, real, genuine encounter, which can, it can be a time of crisis because we're not too sure how this is all going to end up. But because the Lord is very good, he brings us to a place of freedom. And so am I, like Philip, as an example in the gospel, am I a non-anxious presence in a world awash with anxiety and fear and anger? Am I an example of an individual who, yes, although we do ourselves experience crisis, but yet in the midst of it, I can remain a non-anxious presence by the grace of God in my home, at work, at school, in my neighborhood, etc., which means I desire to be connected with God. The cause of our anxiety is our disconnect with God. And so to be a non-anxious presence is to stay connected with the Lord, knowing that I am his beloved daughter. I am his beloved son. He's head over heels in love with me. And he is calling me to cooperate with him in bearing fruit, the gospel says. And the fruit that I am called to produce is disciples, missionary disciples of Jesus, who themselves will then go out and bring others to Jesus. The commission that the Lord gives in the gospel is to go and baptize all nations. And that applies to all of us. I die to myself. That's the crisis of this week from the scriptures that we have. I die to my self, my selfishness, my ego, my pride, my schedule, the way I think things should go. I say, Lord Jesus, give me the grace to let go and stop being dragged through life. And in so doing, in dying to myself, I am made that much more available to the Lord and that much more willing to be of service to others because it's not about me. It's about, Lord, how would you use me today? What would you have me do? Give me your power to do it because I got no power. I am powerless over people, places, things. I need to tap into your power. And when I die to myself and the crisis that involves, I am led to a place of renewal. I'm led to a place of new life, that much more useful to the Lord. And he rejoices in that. And life 
takes on a whole new meaning, a whole new purpose, a whole new joy, because I know that I am cooperating with the Lord and doing what he is asking me to do. Like Jesus, I too, I gain obedience through what I, we, suffer. There's no growth in the spiritual life apart from the cross. Again, if you found it, I've said this to you before, if you have found it, please let me know. I will buy that information off you. I will subscribe to that program, but there is no growth in the spiritual life apart from the cross. And to live one's life in obedience to the will of God is itself a sacrifice. But yet, that crisis, again, it leads to renewal. God's voice, in the gospel again that we have today from John, it sounds like thunder. But it is a word of encouragement. For our sake, the Lord says. For our sake. And we are they for whom, Jesus says, I will draw all people to myself. He wants to draw us ever closer to himself, and we allow ourselves to be drawn closer to the Lord, allow ourselves to be embraced by Jesus and the incredible love that he has for us because he's with us in all circumstances. Whenever we cry out to the Lord, he always hears our voice, and he's with us. The Lord goes on in the gospel today from John to say, the person who loves their life loses it, and the person who hates their life will keep it, which is the contradiction of the spiritual life. The more we give away, the more we get back. God will not be outdone in generosity. It's like recovery in 12-step programs. The more I give of myself to others, helping others by God's grace, of course, and my cooperation with his grace to come to a place of sobriety, the more sobriety I get back. The more I give away, the more I get back. And what I have is not to be kept to myself. It's to be shared with others, to bear fruit, fruit that will last, as John says elsewhere in his gospel, and that involves dying to myself, which itself is a crisis, but it does lead to renewal. We gain from the pain. And this is hard, maybe even harder than committing oneself to regular exercise or a proper diet or a balanced life. But Jesus, he is the best spiritual life fitness coach ever. I want to subscribe to the gym of Jesus. And it's a free membership, by the way. I want to subscribe to the Life Coached Program of Jesus. We do not serve a God. This is elsewhere in the letter to the Hebrews. We do not serve a God who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but who has been tempted in every way that we have, except without sin. The Lord knows that life is challenging. He knows that life is hard. He knows that being confronted with a time of crisis, whatever that might be, can be a time of genuine and real, you know, disillusionment sometimes. But if I keep my eyes fixed on the Lord, Lord Jesus, you are working in my life. You are bringing about a great renewal in my life. And I, Jesus, give you permission to keep doing what you are doing. I can hear a phone ring. I don't have to answer that. Um, just let's ignore it. <laughs> life, my dear friends, life is a series of losses which can lead to gain, provided we let go and not go through life being dragged. I want to read you a little excerpt from a reflection that I came across by Father Alfred McBride for this particular fifth Sunday of Lent, which talk to, talks to us about the importance of understanding how loss can lead to gain in our life. He said, throughout our lives, we have to face a whole series of necessary losses. 
people and relationships and attachments we have to give up if we are to grow. As we grow older, we have to let go of our youthful good health, our perfect vision, our waistlines, our earnestness to save the world, our unrealistic expectations of others, our naive belief in the progress of the earth. The time comes when we have to let go of life itself. But in the midst of this litany of loss, there can be growth and new life. And that, my dear friends, is the good news of today. The loss that we can experience and do experience in life brings about growth. It brings about new life. Crisis precedes renewal. Life is a series of losses. We gain from the pain. We don't inflict unnecessary pain upon ourselves. We don't go looking for the cross. Don't forget, it knows where we live. It will find us, but we pray for the grace to embrace it as it comes our way. And so we today, today, my dear friends, we just pray for the grace to persevere. One day at a time, of course. We want to continue to give Jesus permission to move us to renewal through the various crises of our life, particularly in this season of Lent. Easter is not the finish line. Let's not arrive on Easter Sunday, which is soon to be celebrated, saying, well, thank goodness that's over with. I can pick up all those things I gave up for the season of Lent or stop doing these various spiritual exercises I committed to doing for Lent. But Easter is a spring training, getting us ready for the next stage, the next phase of our ongoing spiritual development so that we can truly be missionary disciples, that is, bringing others into an encounter with Jesus. Calvary is, again, not the end. But Calvary gives way to the good news of the empty tomb. Pain gives way to gain. And new life in your life and in mine comes from our willingness to experience and allow Jesus to bring us to a place of loss that brings us instead to a place of new life. So let us pray. So Jesus, we thank you now for the gift of this new day. We thank you, Jesus, for the, for the gift of each person watching or listening to this podcast. We're here before you, Lord Jesus. You know, Lord, all the circumstances of our life. You know what we're going through right now at this moment. Help us, Lord, to trust in you, that you do have a plan. You have a purpose, Lord, for each of our lives we give you, Jesus, our yes. We surrender ourselves over to you. We give you permission, Lord Jesus, to move us, to direct us, to purify us, to bring us to a place of new life, new growth through the various losses that you are asking us to go through. You're always with us, Lord. We want to be true missionary disciples, Jesus, leading others to an encounter with your love and your mercy and your peace. I thank you, Jesus, personally for all the good work that you are doing in the life of all the people that I have met over the last number of weeks and all the different parish missions that I have been blessed to be a part of. Thank you especially, Lord, for all those you are calling back to yourself in the sacrament of confession, the new life, the freedom, Lord Jesus, that we can experience by going to you, Lord, in all humility and all honesty. You are waiting for us, Jesus, in the sacrament of confession. Help us never to hesitate, Lord, to approach you, to receive your forgiveness, to experience new life, and especially freedom, Jesus. Freedom in our hearts, Jesus. Help us, Lord, to keep our eyes fixed on you. Mother Mary, St. Joseph, our own guardian angels and patron saints, Please pray for us. 
And may Almighty God bless you now, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, well, there you go. God bless the rest of your day. It's plus 20 degrees here. I'm looking out the window. It's beautiful sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. I'm going to go for a long walk and enjoy this day. I hope you can enjoy your day wherever it is you are watching or listening to this podcast. In the meantime, stay caffeinated. And remember that when we are powerless, that's when we're strong. And victory is indeed gained through surrender. God love you.